Welcome to Greenhouse Live in on what is a very chilly Sunday afternoon, Matt. It's uh, nice and sunny outside, but it's particularly not particularly warm. Matt, um, look, disappointing to lose the game, 18-22 or 22-18. Um, but I have to say, my feeling is that we are right in... Today was a semi-final-like football, and we are right there. And I know we got beaten, and I know that's pretty disappointing, and I know that probably means that the top two is almost probably going to be out of reach now. But I come away from that with a fair bit of confidence that we can uh, put a lot of pressure onto these t- on these teams in September. Yeah, look, yeah, it was. It was another loss by less than six points, which is what we seem to do this year. But, um, you know, when you're mixing it with the top teams, and I know we haven't beaten a top four side this side yeah. this time of the year, but, um, you know, we're, we're getting at the crux time and we only need to beat them on the other side of September. So I'm not too worried yet. Yeah, that, look, that's that's right. I mean, I thought it was a, I thought it was a terrific game. Particularly that first half was just um, super, super high level. Um, you've got to um, say they have some super players, and they played very, very well tonight. So, um, you know, Tedesco was probably man of the match. Mitchell was very, very good. That whole left side when they sweep there with Tedesco and uh, and Mitchell and um, Tupu is is just, you know, very, very dangerous. Um, their kicking game. Is is superb, uh, Kiri. Kiri, that one where he just put it on top of Rapana's head and and Manu jumped up and scored yeah. um, was really really good. I, did, I didn't think Cronk had as good a game today, um, but we are not far away. And and I thought our forwards really matched it with theirs today and probably probably exceeded them. And uh, we didn't quite get the bounce of the ball. We didn't get a few calls go our way, and it was a little bit scrappy at times. But gee, I reckon we're not far away. Look, I, you know, we're in the contest, and that's and that's one of the things we've been um, complaining about for a few years. Yeah. And obviously, this year's been very different in that regard. Yeah. But um, as I said, it's it's very nice to know that we're there or thereabouts. It would have been nicer to win, and I must admit, I, I thought we would have going to get them today. Um, I just had that feeling about it. But to know that we are four points away from from beating that side um, is very pleasing. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Um, they they are um, a quality outfit. They're, they obviously won the premiership last year. They've been there or thereabouts for a number of years. Um, if we go back through the game, they they started off well. They got that first try, which um, again that that was sort of all our nightmares come true there. With with Tedesco making that line break, probably uh, Croker and Simonson coming out a little bit early. And no, it was Jack. Jack ran and, up and, and missed. Yeah, and Jack Whiten coming out and 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 allowing Radley in. Um, but then those two tries that we scored, I thought we really had them on the hop for a little while there. We, the um, offload from Bateman to Rapana was just a magic, magic offload with a left hand as well. So his, yep. his right hand, left hand. Um, and then that, that second try we scored with Croker scored was just, you know, just the ability to go down that line and, and have them at sixes and sevens against what is probably as good a defence as there is going around um, was pretty special. Yeah, well, you know, we were pretty good actually with our offloading today. Um, I think we needed to do a lot more of it in the second half and we, we didn't, you know, it's one of those things where you don't want to push the pass because you don't want to chase the game, but at the same time, at some stage, you've got to chase the game. And I think, yeah. I think at the moment we're, we're waiting that little bit too long to chase the game. Um, I think at 20 minutes out, we really needed to start pushing a couple of passes to try and get, get in it. Um, but at the same time, can't complain. Like, those are the two two of the three best defences running around in the competition and four points split them, so um, you, you can't complain about the effort. Yeah, look, I'm not so sure about pushing the game. I think, I think you know, the, the position of the game at, um, what was it, 22-12 with about 20 minutes to go, I really felt at that point if they got the next try, they were going to they were gonna you know, win pretty comfortably. So we had to be somewhat careful there, and, and I think what, a, what part of that is is backing ourselves, backing our ability that we're going to be able to get the points. If we, if we play to our structure, the points will come. And I, I think that's right. I think, I think it did show a little bit there where we had a lot of probably most of that last 20 minutes we had the ball in our um, attacking um, 20 or you know their, their um, back 20 most of that time we we didn't really throw too many shots at them we we put a couple of <coughs> nice kicks through I thought Hogson put a couple of nice kicks through but there wasn't necessarily the ability to either go through them or around them like we've probably seen with some other sides so if you compare that to say a, a um, 
Warriors last week when they were pretty ordinary in the defence. You saw Louis, uh, no, Louis it was the week before Louis went for the, through for a try. Um, Soli Ola go through for a try. Papali go through a try. Really just going straight through them. That was never going to happen today. And we do try to do that a bit. But, um, yeah, I'm not too sure that, that passing the ball around and going crazy was the, was the right play with about um, 20 minutes to go. And I think right towards the end we're right in it. Look, I, I wouldn't say throw it around like hot potato. I was more yeah. thinking we've got to push a few few offloads. We've got to find some second phase because when we did get some second phase, we looked really good. Um, and I just think we waited a bit too long to try that late in the that Well, there certainly were some very good offloads today. I mean, a couple of the Croker did. I mean, Cro- Croker's not normally the, the player we talk about for offloading. I mean, he had a couple of great offloads out the back. So, um, yeah, just trying to find that. And I thought maybe a couple of times on the edges we looked a little bit um, underdone too. I think Kotrick still coming back from... From injury, sort of, oh, sorry, from suspension, um, probably that run will do him a bit of good. He's um, had a few weeks out. Um, I think probably it also shows too that there there probably is a spot for Leilua in that side. I think um, Simonson at times, as good as he has been, probably against really quality opposition, was was uh, uh, seen to be probably not quite to that. He's not far away, I have to say, and you have to say if he gets dropped, he'd, he'd be unlucky. But I think that probably that's sort of that little bit of a difference. And you, when you look at just the, the absolute quality of the of the Roosters, look, it's it's a pretty harsh call to be, be making that decision. But um, at some point in the very very near future, I think um, Ricky's going to have to make that call. So um, I, I've still had this sneaking suspicion that we're going to carry a, a, a back on the bench. Um, going into the finals, I think, I think the finals could be decided by the fact that you've got to shift a back row wider. And um, you know, we were lucky today that Bateman only had to play a couple of minutes on the edge. But I don't want to see Bateman playing, you know, 30, 40, 50 minutes. Yeah, on the well, it's probably wider that went there actually, right towards the end. But, but um, yeah, I think that's I think that's right. And I think I think you saw today that Hivili only came on with a couple of minutes to go, and. You're probably sitting there thinking, geez, maybe with 15 minutes to go, maybe if we could throw a Leilua on, he might have been, been the one that could just create something out of nothing um, when, we, when we need that try and we're searching for that. So, um, yeah, that is, that is the key. I thought our forwards were forwards. You know, you're talking about um, needing to, to carry them um, on the bench. You know, our forwards, I thought, were terrific today as far as early on. I thought Papali's first... 35 minutes in the first half was just superb. Absolutely magnificent as a, as a prop. And again, if you see that when he gets a little bit of space, he needs that. He's, he's, he's not the bash and barge. Um, he gets a little bit of space. He's very, very good. Soliola, I thought, started very well. Didn't probably play big minutes today, but, but was good. And, and when you've got Sutton coming off the bench, you can play big minutes as well. It does mean our rotation does have that ability to, um, to be putting the pressure on all the, all the time. Yeah, look, I, I really think that, that we have enough forward power there to to cover a back on the bench. I mean, you've got to remember that Havili's unlikely to play at hooker at any stage, um, and this year he's played at prop and lock. So yeah. he's going to play middle third anyway. So if you look at it like a Brandon Smith from the Storm, he plays middle third, and I know he's a he's a better player than Havili, and, and that's fine. But we're going to use him in the same way. Now, if he's, if he's looked at as our fifth middle and then a part-time hooker, then you can afford to hold him all the way back to the last 20 minutes if you have to. And if the back doesn't get on off on the field because we don't have an HIA that's effective or, yeah. or you don't feel the need or whatever, or you run him out as a running lock right at the end of the game, doesn't matter. But I, I think we've got forwards that can play big enough minutes that we don't need to carry that extra prop. Yeah, look, I, th- I think that's that'll be the question that'll be talked about when when potentially Lolua comes into the into the mix. Um, we talked about potentially Simonson playing off the bench. Um, I mean, uh, whatever it happened, it'd be pretty rough on on Havili, I have to say he's he's played every game the two years he's been here and he's he hasn't put a put a foot wrong. But you just wonder whether when we're chasing the, chasing the game at the end, and maybe we need that that try in a final to get us over the line. Not unlike say that that one down in in Melbourne um, a couple of years ago. Um, one of those guys coming off the bench, maybe as a fresh back, might just be the, might be the the secret. I don't, I don't know. But um, talking about the forwards, though, I also want to talk about the two back rowers. I thought I thought Bateman and um, and Whitehead has had great games today. Probably Whitehead even better actually today. That was probably his best game for the season. I thought he just was always up and up and in there and 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 making some space. And 
and you know the the, the battle between Bateman and um, and particularly Mitchell because Mitchell comes in a fair bit was just just superb really. I mean, they, you know, like Mitchell's been a good player. I know he, he sort of copped a bit over Origin when he got got dropped, and clearly there was some things off the field there, but. Um, he is a super player, and the battle between those two was was pretty special. I thought. Yeah, well, I think uh, Whitehead's ball carrying today was super yeah. impressive. You know, he's not really known for for bending the line back, and I think he yeah. I think he managed to do that a lot today. And of course, he was Johnny on the spot for the try. Um, look, um, we know what kind of fight comes when you put Bateman out there, and um, he was very happy to stick it to Warrior Hardgreaves, who's a known known. Uh, Protagonist, yeah, and uh, yeah, and I think he, I think he really rattled Luttrell. I, I think Luttrell actually got to a point where he was actually going head hunting a bit, yep. um, and I, I think that's that was the theory. Get him, put him off his game. It didn't didn't quite work, but again, I don't think it was far away from from really becoming something a bit more interesting. I think. Yeah, we'll get the comments in a sec, but I also want to talk about um, the game. Really, in the last few weeks, seems to have changed. I think the Raiders have really changed it with. With these strips, you know, there's just so many of these one-on-one strips at the moment, mm-hmm. and and we did some fantastic ones today. But it's also, I think, seeing um, a bit different game in the play the ball as well. You're seeing you're seeing players sort of being more in a wrestle at the at the play the ball to protect that strip as well. So we saw a lot today where arms and legs got tangled up, and it seemed to be be quite slow for the for the next play the ball. Yeah, look, I mean, I think that is a little bit part and parcel with the game, and I think that's. That's going to have to be an area that, that the referees look at and how they're going to speed that up or um, something. I'm, I'm not quite sure what the ruling is going to be there, but something to do with, I'd say, once the hold gets called, none of this one, two, three stuff. You say hold, get your hands off them. Yeah. Um, sort of instantly stuff. I think it's probably about the only way you go about it. But, um, yeah, it's pretty safe to say that Josh Hodgins is the best stripper in Fishwick. I <laughs> bet he's stripper in Fishwick. Uh, yeah, look, I'm not too sure he lives in Fishwick, but um, oh well, he's got a few mates too. He's got um, you know Bateman's obviously done quite a few, and and Whitehead as well. So um, and in fact, I think Croker did one or two today as well. So yeah, but it, but it just seems to be the way the game's been played just over the last few weeks is it is it really has become. Um, a feature not only of us, but I think everyone, everyone else is really copying that, copying that now. And, and when you look at finals, where they, they tend to probably put the whistle away a little bit, it'll be interesting to see how that how that goes. And with, if that's not clean, will it will it sort of get into a real wrestle in the in the finals and and, and not allow teams to play open footy? I, I expect that you know if we play the Roosters again, you'd think most likely it's probably going to be in Sydney you now after after losing. So. You know that'll be on the SCG, which is hard and fast. And it's great ground. And it's cut short for AFL, so um, it will it will be a quick game, and um, it'll be interesting. I think both sides will be trying to slow that down a bit. So it'll be interesting to see whether the refs are there to to blow a lot. Look, uh, it was very tough to watch today. As I said, um, I'm not sure whether to say the refs were in there too much or not enough. But but that slow play of the ball is definitely an area they're going to have to look at in the next couple of weeks because. If that's the way it's going to be played yeah. in semi-finals football, it's going to make it very slow. Um, and, well, I mean, there's not really many points in a in a finals game generally, anyway. But I think if the play of the ball is going to be that slow, it's going to be even lower again. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I'm sure. I'm sure when we get to the comments, there'll be plenty of comments about the refs. So yeah. I thought, I thought that in the main they probably had an okay game. I thought there was there was a few strange calls, but they probably got. More right than wrong, I think. the The funny one for me was was that try where they got it right with the video ref. But the, the, if the ref's going to the ref called it no try, he said that uh, Nick O'Clock's has been taken out. I mean, it seems very strange they don't they go and back themselves in a call like that where it's still a little bit after that before the try is actually scored. Um, I mean, what happens if he gets tackled there? Do we do we go back to the go, go back to the penalty or what happens? You know, like. That, yep. that seemed to be a strange call to me. But in the end, they got it right. Because if you look at the replay, um, Tupu is certainly contesting for the football. And if anything, uh, Nick O'Clockstead gets their second. And um, I think I think that was probably a fair call. But um, it just seems strange to me that the ref on field called it no try and that that can sort of be overturned where you've got the ref who's making a decision on what he sees rather than sort of... You know, it's a feeling that you've got out there from the angle that you're on that you've got to call them. Yep. Um, it just seems strange that the video ref then gets involved in that and, and then overturns that. Look, I think the referee's got to... 
I think the referees have to stick to their guns a bit more as far as on-field calls go, and I think that's that's one of the things a lot of fans have said that yeah. you know we're sick of this. Well, we'll wait for it to go to the bunker because then we can double check my yeah. call. No, no, they've got to be good enough to have a gut feel of it and make a decision. Now, uh, my opinion was Tupu had eyes for the ball, but the second he pulls out, if you're in no man's land, bad luck. And in the end of the day, he walked underneath Clockstad, takes him out. It's a penalty. Um, you know, if he jumps for the ball and Nickel Clockstad goes over, I'm okay with that. He's trying to get to the ball. But the problem is he didn't. He pulled out. I've seen us I've seen us get penalised for that this year. Well, so maybe, but there was also that one at Penrith a couple of weeks ago where it was where it actually went the other way, where I think it was pretty clear that um, we touched the player jumping for the ball and we, we got away with it. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I tend to think if players are contesting for the ball that... You'd like to see that play on. The whole idea of that of that rule is is so that the guy who's ju- jumping in the air is who's totally um, defenceless. defenceless doesn't just go and get barrel because that's what they used to do. You used to be able to just go and barrel them and um, smash them. And, the, and then when then they brought that rule in, the wingers weren't as big as they are now. You can imagine if that was sort of free reign, you could just destroy blokes. So um, I don't think that'll that'll be um, getting changed anytime soon. But it was an interesting interesting call and. Um, Anyway, let's let's try and get to some of the comments. I think. Okay, Ashley White, very hard done by the refs. Well, we've sort of touched on that, yeah. and I think that's a bit bit each way. Michael also mentions what did what do we make of the referee? Well, yeah. we've just we've just touched on that. Uh, Sam Lorenzo, the Raiders need to straighten up their attack. Uh, too much lateral running, bring back BJ. Well, I think we, we've sort of touched on that. We think. We think our, our guys need to be a little bit wider of the ruck to go forward, but I, I think our sweeping move to the left, we're definitely all angling to the sideline and someone's got to straighten it up a bit. So I agree with that, Sam. Good call. Yeah, but you've also got, you've got to have, have him fit. And I think, you know, BJ, I, I wouldn't expect he's going to come in and just I, dominate I, from, no. from the first game. I was... I was surprised if he was fit today that he didn't play for Mounties. I would have thought that he would he would get a run there. They actually had a win today, which is the first time in, in a long, long time. But, um, yeah, I would have thought that we would have brought him back through there today. But uh, I think there's there's certainly a, a, certainly some school of thought that he coming back would be good. And, and at times, um, Kotrick, I thought, showed today that he's been used to playing left side a lot because uh, there was one time where he had an opportunity to to get the ball out to Rapana and he had the ball had the ball left hand where if he had been carrying it right hand he would have been able to offload and and that was probably the difference. I thought I thought Kotrick at times looked a little bit a little bit off the pace today. I don't think it'll take him very long to get back onto the pace and he'll be a very good player. But um, yeah, there is there is something enticing about BJ if he's fully fit going back into that centre spot and then Kotrick going back to the wing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think that there were times there where you can see Kotrick's a very tough to handle character. Yeah. He got a lot of pushing off pebbles, bouncing around that sort of pinball thing, and that late run just shows how strong he is. But um, I still think he's going to be a centre down the track. But yeah, yeah I there, agree. There's, there's, there's definitely some work to be done, and you're right. He's, he's obviously got some, some left-sided um, control going there at the moment, which yeah, is that's, obviously that's a lot to do with I... playing out outside Croker. So, I mean, yeah. no problem about him being a right centre. He played right centre in 20s and, That's it. and he was, you know, the best defensive centre in, in at that level for two or three years. So, um, he'll, he'll be okay there, but um, yeah, I just think in some ways, BJ coming back would be pretty positive. Mal also says we went a bit too far sideways and that we were playing for the penalty. Uh, Lachlan Groove, don't think Kotrick did enough. Well, I, 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 I know where now. he's coming from and I, yeah. we did just touch on it, but we do go left. Yeah, we go left, so he doesn't get to do much because we go left. Well, one of the things you are seeing at the moment is you're seeing Caesar sweeping across the ground a lot more than what he was, and we talked about that sort of weeks ago. And I think that's been a positive. I think, as I think we've seen a number of times, I'm not too sure that Caesar's going to quite be at the level of, of Kiri and um, and Cronk, and I, I think there's probably a bit of a forlorn hope to think that that's going to change in the next sort of two months. But. Um, He's, he is getting involved a lot more on both sides. But, but the way White naturally runs to the left means that um, that's where the attack goes. Yeah, that's right. It's also our stronger side. Let's yep. face it, it's our stronger yep. attacking side. So, uh, Our best friend Tezo's back. Um, it was anyone's game. We can have a bit of luck. Yep. Well, that's right. Look, I, uh, I think that's true. But, but I would also say, too, that the better side won. I think that I think that um, over the course of the game, for a while there, they looked like they were going to take us apart. And and credit to us, we we stood up there. And, and we've now played them twice. We played them in in Brisbane, where they got the big jump on us, and and we came back, weren't far away. Probably a little bit unlucky not to get it right at the end. You could probably argue a bit the same today, but 
they are they do look like they've got that extra gear against us and we're going to have to we're going to have to find that ability to be able to to get over the top of them and and I think we can do that um, but that yeah that, that they are they are a very good side and they're going to be very tough to beat in the finals most definitely Sharon Lang says we need to find better options in the attacking 20 yeah again look the, the defense is pretty good and and sometimes you see that now where teams get um, you know, ten or twenty out penalties and stuff like that. They get six tackles on the on the line. They they struggle to actually um, make much out of that because the defence is up and in. If if you're that close, you've got the um, thirteen man defence because you've got the fullback in the line, um, and that does make it quite tough actually. So sometimes we actually need a little bit of space. Yeah, and I think that's you know we were we were actually very close to scoring a couple of times. You know, from some pine brilliance he, he nearly dragged a few yeah. people over and then Caesar must have gone inches inches away with his uh, his run late um, but we know that when we're in the 20 the few things that have moved worked for us and I don't like it but crash balls does work if you've got them set up right I like the sweep play where Hodgson wraps around yep. the prop that tries to create space because the whole idea is to try and suck in a few defenders on those those close guys that works the other thing is is a late offload and we saw that with Bateman today you've got to suck in some defenders to create some space and that's the only way to do it when you're in that, that close well and, that, and that's what our guys can do so we've talked about Papali a lot being a bit wider sucks them in Tarpani really sucks them in as well so that's what you're trying to do and then hopefully um, create that, that off, off the back one of the problems for me is that at times Hogson's having to be the playmaker so he's not necessarily there to take that ball off the, off the edge and score the try himself like you see a lot of um, hookers do so, um, yeah. That would be my thing. I'd like to see too is a bit more, bit more um, the ability from our short kicking game from our halves there because it is it is often Hogson that is the one that needs to put the kick in. The kick that he put into um, that Whitehead scored in the second half was terrific, and he and he did that other one that, that just sat up and Whitehead was coming through and it just sort of just got past him. There was we got a drop out out of that, but yeah, you'd like to see probably Caesar and. Um, White and being able to do that a bit more so that Hogson can be, be that man around the ruck that can often go over the line himself. Yeah, well, I mean, they have, they, both of those guys have done it in the recent past, so I'm, I'm, I'm not not too discouraged by what they have and haven't yeah. done today, but we'll keep, we'll keep looking at it. Uh, Emmanuel, so proud of the boys, uh, and I think we can beat the storm. It's a big call. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a sec. Yep. Uh, Tazo, do you think we can still finish in the top four and beat some top teams? Well, I think we will finish in the top four, but... Yeah, it'd be nice to beat a couple of these sides in the run home. Yeah, it would, Tazo. And obviously, obviously, um, top four is still a good chance. I would have thought that we we've got a, a pretty tough run. But Manly losing the other day helps. Parramatta is probably the other worry a bit. Actually, they they have a pretty easy run, which I, I don't think they're anywhere near one of the best four teams in the competition. But they um, they're going to be competing for it just simply because they've got a pretty good run home, and and um, we we could drop a couple. That that game against Manly here will be massively important. Um, the game obviously beating Storm would be pretty important too. But but that that um, we've talked about that in sort of coming up that that really will be that sort of classic four point game. Yep. And you'd have to think, like I said last week, that I said if we couldn't beat the Roosters, I doubted we would probably finish, be able to finish above them. I think we might struggle to finish above them now. Um, and I'd probably say the same thing about that Manly game. If we can, if we can, well, probably a bit the other way. If we can finish, if we can win that game, I don't think there's any chance they could finish above us because they'd have to basically win every game. We'd have to pretty much lose every game. Yeah, look, I think we, we'd, we'd work that out and I, I tend to agree with that too. Um, Alexander, uh, played well but not good enough. Plenty of chances. Our fifth play options at their end were diabolical. Uh, oh, I think diabolical is a bit tough, but but yeah, that we we would like to see some magic come out at times, and and I'm not too sure that's always there. That's a very very good defensive side. The Roosters, particularly particularly on their line, they they don't let much through at all. Uh, Bruce also talks about uh, the last play options and that we go to left far too often. Um, and I should say they're, they're big and mobile too, the the Roosters, because particularly. Um, Verrills came off at half time, didn't come back. So they had Radley playing at um, Hooker, who's who's a big, tough. Well, he's not that big, but he's just he's just tough as nails. Nat Butcher come came on, who's who's the same sort of build and and pretty tough. So you've got him um, along with their forwards, who you know, Warrior Hargrove's pretty mobile. That Tenovano that started today, I thought was very good. 
Um, so they're they're pretty mobile on and 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 then you know, of course they've got big big centres in Manu and, and Mitchell. So you're not necessarily just going to barge through them too easily. So you've got to find a find a hole and um, and again that's that's really up to up to having those link men come off. Um, Nico Clock said for for as good as he played today, again probably wasn't the one that was hanging around that ruck and that twenty that that sort of twenty metres either. I didn't think he he quite gave us the options there as, as you'd perhaps like. So um, that's the sort of spot where in the finals we're probably going to you know assuming we probably will play them again, um, we'll just have to be able to punch through a bit more. But but I also think that the key thing in the finals will be defensively. Um, there won't be any more points scored in the finals than that. I did say at half time is that you know there was thirty points in that first half. I didn't expect there'd be a lot of points in the second half, um, and um, I think that probably what, what what was it was two tries in the second half, wasn't? It? Yep. So um, one each. So yeah, I think it'll be pretty tight in the in the final. So it'll be it'll be about having that defence and just taking the opportunities when you get them. Uh, Di Cladwell, well done Raiders. What was the crowd numbers? Mitch, oh, crowd Mitch was replied with nineteen three ninety, I believe. It was no, like it's nineteen five thirty. Nineteen five thirty, I think, was the official number, which is fantastic. So just just a brilliant crowd. Obviously, it's been a, a very cold weekend here. We had snow at the AFL on Friday night, so to have nineteen and a half thousand turn up, the biggest home and away crowd we've had since two thousand and ten. Um, so yeah, just fantastic atmosphere here today. I thought, and and you know, and really big crowd. And Roosters don't bring a huge amount of fans. So you know, if we play Tigers or South or something like that, they they tend to bring a lot more than what Roosters do. So um, I felt, yeah, really big turnout. You'd hope to, you'd like to think that in two weeks' time against Manly, there'll be a big turnout again. Probably that last Saturday afternoon before the finals, and hopefully, hopefully, assuming we do get some finals here, um, you you'd hope you hope boys? you have a big, really big. Um, so we got a photo? You can come in. Yeah. Come on, boy. Hopefully, um, be a really big uh, crowds here again and, and a really good atmosphere as it was today. So, yeah, really good effort for everyone to turn up in, in what has been a pretty pretty good weekend to be staying inside. Uh, we've got a couple of people mentioning about the Golden Boy scoring a try. I'm assuming we're talking about Luttrell. Um, Callum and Tyson, if you could fill that in, that'd be good. He's a good player, though, I have to say. Like, he's, he's very, very dangerous. Um, Ivan Guerrero, no way he was contested for the ball. Oh, yeah, we're definitely talking about uh, this. Is really the, uh, this is the C&K being taken out, yep, for sure. Yep. Uh, we've got a few comments about that. Uh, Mark Caesar was poor. It needs to run direct. Gee, that's harsh. Yeah, I actually I actually think that the fact that Caesar's actually um, covering a bit more of the ground is actually a good thing. So um, we've talked about that we'd like to see him you know, be able to get those kicks through and, and get the repeat sets or set up the tries. But but him actually moving around and actually being a bit more mobile, I'm happy with. Yeah, look, I think he ran the ball a couple of times. He knew he scored a try, so, yeah. you, you know. Yeah, I'm, I didn't think he had a bad game. He's, yeah. but he's We've talked about this a lot. The, the halves are where they're, you know, where they're, where they're at. They're, you know, we do, we, we do lose a bit of quality when you compare... Um, not so much Whiten because he's a he's a much different player, but but Caesar compared to Cronk is is not really the you know a fair contest sort of thing. We I know who I'd rather have, but um, yeah, I, I think Caesar's doing the job he he needs to do. We've talked about this a lot. Um, he's doing the job we want him to do, and he's not going to come suddenly from being a um, you know handy halfback to being a superstar. I don't think overnight. Uh, Sam says the Mounties won, or well, you touched on that. Yep. Steve says Klein waits too long to call held. Well, I think we've touched on that too. Uh, Lee, uh, what no, I, 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 sorry, I, I think that's a bit more specific. That I think I think there's actually an argument about that. I think that um, the games he's refereed, it does seem to be that it it does take a while, and that and that then brings in that strip. It also brings in that potential penalty because you're going in for that second effort, yep. and. I think we saw a bit of that today. So I think I think Steve was it. I think was it. Yes, Steve. Steve I think yep. um, I think he's actually got a point there. That, that Klein does tend to hold it a little bit more than some of the other refs do. Now Klein, I expect, will be um, certainly there or thereabouts in the finals. So we're going to have to get used to that. But um, yeah, I think, there's, I think there's an argument to say that that he does hold it a little bit longer than some of the others. Whether uh, that's right or wrong, you can debate. But lying in the ruck all game, from my perspective. <laughs> Uh, Lee says, what was the go not attacking Latrell's side enough today? Well, as we've already mentioned, we go left as often as they do. Yeah, um, I don't know about that. Yep. Sam says, would not disagree that BJ back on our right edge is dominant. Well, again, he's going to be well and truly underdone. I yep. don't know about that. 
Uh, Ian, the Roosters do slow the ball, do slow down the ruck very, very well. Um, we were better when we play the fast of the ball. Yeah, well. Oh, look, every side's like that. Yep. And that's and that wrestle is going to be what's going to be the key. And and in finals where they're probably not going to blow a lot of penalties, um, you're going to be battling that that all the way. You know, clearly, you know, we play Melbourne next week. You know, they're not going to be they're not going to be letting us have quick play the balls. I guarantee you that. So um, we're going to have to overcome that if we're going to um, have have a fair crack in the finals. Uh, David likes to congratulate the crowd for showing up and the boys. Uh, Michael, two things I noticed when we run ourselves out of room on that left side too much. Yeah, well, I, we did talk about us. Yep. Sort of yeah, we do, because I think that Whiten's floats that way. Um, I think at times uh, Kroger's had some really good offloads. Uh, Simonson at times is perhaps not in, in 100% best position. So, again, maybe... Um, Maybe Kotrick being on that side too might might be a bit different too. If yeah. if uh, if Croker's able to get the ball free as he's able to do a lot, um, Kotrick probably has a little bit more strength to be able to come inside and and break and break uh, tackles than what Simonson does. Yeah, well, I think the, the, one of the problems that we did. I don't want to sound it, harsh on no. Bailey because I think he's he's had an extraordinarily good season. I mean, oh, you know, definitely. you talk about you talk about. Um, Bateman and Nickel Clocks did. I mean, Simonson came in with even sort of he was he was just here for trial of uh, training, you know, to yeah. maybe make the development squad. So for him to be be a regular in our side, side has been a fantastic effort. But I just feel that maybe, yeah, potentially you maybe if you got Kotrick there, it might be a bit different. Well, I mean, uh, we touched on it before, but both Jack and Croker veer left when they run. They just yep. seem to drift left. It's well, they're they're, they're left footed. They're, yeah. they're, they're, so you see them kick, they kick left foot. Yeah. They're very left side dominant. I'd imagine they probably you know play cricket left handed, those sort of things. So yeah, yeah, yeah. of course, uh, Gavin, I'm confident we can go deep into the finals if we main fit. That's good. Yeah, news. I agree, Gavin. I I come away from this with a fair bit of confidence. I have to say, I'm, <laughs> I'm disappointed that we've lost, but I I have more and more belief that we are going to be there or thereabouts and, and competing with these teams. I'm, I'm reasonably confident Dye's done this a bit tongue-in-cheek, but is Jason Crocker OK? He looked a bit terrible after that. Uh, it might be a bit of autocorrect there too, but um, <laughs> Crocker. Um, oh, well, he got, he got his head slammed into the ground. I'm not too sure he... He face he planted, be... he looked dodgy as. Did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah he, was, he was on a different planet. Oh, OK, I, I'm not sure. We'll have to find that well, out. Well, but... put it this way, the, the trainer came over and immediately touched his head. Crocker was on yeah, another planet. Yeah, so... OK, well, let's hope that he's OK for next week. Um, that, that may that may suddenly bring Leilua back into uh, contention much quicker if, if he can't well, play, if Cracker can't play. turnaround? Yeah, yeah, six so day turnaround. So he's on the cusp of being uh, even available then. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah, and that protocol. and that was actually one assuming, of the... Assuming he failed the, failed the test. I don't know if he failed the test, but they, they immediately put him in the HIA bin. So yeah. I assume he... I don't know. I don't know. And maybe I, someone else... Oh, well, I think... Well, he, he has to go off for the assessment. And... and um, there was only four or five minutes to go, so he was never going to be able to come back on. No. Um, yeah, how he is, I don't know. But, we'll find out. But he out. still has to pass this. If he if he didn't pass the test post that HIA thing, then he's in real strife for next week with okay. a six-day turnaround. Well, we'll see what happens there. But it was interesting. I did think with about five minutes to go that when Kroger went off that um, if suddenly we had a scored, we may have had Aidan Caesar, who probably hasn't um, had a kick for goal in a match all season, probably potentially kicking. a in, in, a, in first grade? Yep. Yeah, he's had a couple this year. Like seriously, like two. Oh, okay. I don't know about that, but yeah, he may have been, he may have been suddenly kicking kicking for goal to um to, to, to win, win the it. match. But yeah. anyway, sadly, wasn't wasn't there that opportunity. Uh, yeah. The, sorry, the boys did come back and tell me it was about Latrell. Um, Mitch Carter Hodgson looked a little wayward at times today. Oh, I think you'd be a bit harsh there, Mitch. I, I think he's trying to find trying to find the gap. Um, so yes, he, he he slipped over a couple of times early, which seemed a bit strange. But um, yeah, he's probably going forward and back a bit, but he's trying to find that gap. And unlike last week, where he found the gap very easily, so he just went straight up through them. Yeah. Um, those gaps weren't to there them. today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Uh, Steve Spencer thinks we should get a golden logie. I, I don't know. The golden logie. Oh, well, there you go. That. I'm I'll not too sure. It, but I don't know yeah. Well, there you go. Well, there, that that. Um, well, nominate it, Steve. I'm not too sure exactly what the process is. I'm not too sure whether a Facebook Live show can actually win a gold logie, but I'm um, hard to believe. Well, <laughs> why not nominate? There you go. Hashtag hashtag Sean and Matt for gold logie. Um, and Kieran Pendon thought Hodgson was a bit clunky at times today. And again, I think that's yeah, possibly a I bit think harsh. So. Yeah, I think so. Um, that's, about that's it. Right, okay, yeah. it's terrific. So we've got plenty of comments there. Which um, so I think most people are reasonably positive about where we're at. So. 
clearly um, short turnaround as you talked about and uh, the missions don't get any easier let me tell you because we've got Melbourne and Melbourne next Saturday night so that is going to be a, a real test we are in a bit of a fight at the moment now for the for the top four we're having lost this one and depending on how South go yeah, um, they're well playing the aren't they yeah. um, depending on how South go and, and but Manly and Parra aren't far behind Manly losing the other day hopped as I said but um it is going to be a tough, tough ask. But again, a bit the same as today, you'd like to think that if we can go and compete, we, we get a fair bit of confidence for, for future weeks. And um, But it would be nice to get that one scalp, wouldn't it? Uh, definitely. And if it was Melbourne, that would be it would be pretty sweet. Though, um, like, like I've mentioned earlier in the piece, that if I don't beat the Roosters or Melbourne before September, I'd be very happy to beat them after September. October. Well, well, that 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 says that says one thing. If we're playing in October, that would be nice because that would mean that um, we're in the grand final. The only game that's in October is the grand final, so that would be very nice. And to to win in October would mean that uh, we would be having the uh, the biggest greenhouse live ever. <laughs> let me tell you. Yeah, I think it would be pretty popular. Uh, yeah, well, we've already got a Sean and Matt for goal logie. Oh, there we go. Ooh. Okay, well, there you go. We'll start it going. I'm not too sure we can nominate ourselves, so we're going to need someone else to do it. So, um, We'll nominate Steve Spencer to nominate us. Yeah, we nominate Steve Spencer to nominate us. Yeah, how does that work? Yeah. So, um, yeah, there you go. Put us up. Three, two, two ones? Uh, well, let's, let's quickly go to a couple of other things. So, um, Melbourne next week, as we said, going to be a, a real tough tough ask, but but I think we're right in and I think today showed that we can we can match with any side. So I think that we will be there or thereabouts next week. Um, and maybe maybe in some ways we've got a little bit more to play for than what they have too because they're pretty much um, comfortably got minor premiership. Um, Mounties uh, played today pretty much whilst we were playing and actually had a win, which is the first time in about six weeks they'd, they'd lost I think eight out of nine before today. Um, they beat the Bulldogs. That was actually on uh, nine gem or whatever it's called uh, today. So if you actually probably want to go and watch that back, it's probably on the nine uh, app. You can probably go and watch that back. I taped it at home, so um, see how we how we went. What I saw early on, Hudson Young was very good. Harley Smith Shields scored a try. He's a under twenties player. I think looks very good. Uh, Seb Chris scored another try. Um, but yeah, they must have done pretty well to hang on in the end because they've they've been run down a lot lately. Um, Jersey Flegg played yesterday out at Seafit. Um, they're a little bit like the first grade, I suppose. They're getting better and better all the time. And and their first half yesterday was very very good. They were sixteen six up at half time, but the Roosters came out who was second came right over the top. Second half beat us twenty six sixteen. So it was twenty twenty eight sixteen was it? So it was it was twenty two twenty two nil in the second half. So that was disappointing. But but the game was probably a bit closer than that. Um, yeah, let's three, two, one. Um, I am going to say I'm going to give three points to Whitehead today. I thought he was terrific. Um, I'm going to give two to Bateman and one to Papali. Papali, Papali. Oh, actually, I might even swap the other way. I'm going to give two to Papali and one to Bateman. Um, I just thought Papali in that first 35 was just really, really good. Um, his second half, he, he actually probably spent a bit more time on the bench than what I thought. Maybe with Sutton being in the team, you've got a bit more of that opportunity. But um, I thought he was he was very, very good early on and a great, great forward performance. And, and Bateman, I think, is just there or thereabouts. And that, that offload that he gave to, to Rapana was just world class. Yeah, look, I went Papali three. I think that first stint was phenomenal, and, and when he came back, he gave us some more punch. Um, Bateman got the two. Um, you know, just he, he grinds it out all, all week, um, and of course, there's the offload for the try. And I think I went Hodjo for for one. Um, okay. Thought he was pretty solid today. Jared Kroger got the man of the match here, which um, I think when he's playing the 250th game, 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 I did make the comment that he probably could have got knocked out in the first minute. He probably still would have got it. But um, look, he had a good game too. I mean, I'm not saying that he wasn't um, worthy of that, but he he wasn't my pick. But um, yeah, so Melbourne next week, obviously um, tough road trip. It's a place, I guess, the players have flown to Melbourne Airport a number of times this year because we yeah. seem to have got offloaded to Melbourne uh, no matter where we're going. I think we're going to Brisbane, they went had to go via Melbourne. We got went to Darwin, we had to go via Melbourne. So the trip to Melbourne Airport should be a well-worn path, but it is a big, big task against the storm. But but if we're going to be in it, and I think we're right in the mix, even though we got beat today, if we're, we're going to be in the mix, we've got to be competitive next week and um, really take it up to them and... You know, we we want to the uh, the competition to really notice that we are we are right in the mix. 
Yeah, most definitely. If we can, you know, I'd, I'd like to be on the other side of the ledger, but if we can show a similar performance against the Storm, at least, yeah. at least we'll not be in it. Yep. Okay. All right. Very good. Well, look, we'll shall see you in Melbourne next Saturday night. Uh, until then, go Raiders. Go the Raiders.